Welcome back everybody for another video. So in our last video, we went over how to pick off, do the, basically do the pick off cutoff with the sub spindle and um, essentially create that sub spindle grabbing the part in the DS30Y. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to basically continue on from there. So how do you actually program tool paths for the sub spindle in the DS30Y? Uh, we're gonna go over how to get this thing to come up and actually eject the part. So it's not just sitting back there with the part in it so you don't have to hand load, you can actually automate this then. Um, so uh, yeah, let's just begin. So one of the things that I do want to mention is that if you didn't watch the pickoff cutoff, you probably wanna watch that first. Uh, because that's going to be something you're going to do prior to this. As you can see here, we have all our pickoff cutoff operations. Um, one other thing that I didn't note in the last video is that if I zoom out here, as you can see our pickoff cutoff, we already have our part copied over here. Um, one of the things that I don't believe I mentioned is that if you move your little arrow here, you can actually get it to walk through the pickoff cutoff operations. So as I start to go down, okay, so now it's coming in, it's uh, feeding over top of our part, and then it's closing the spindle, cutting off, or actually no pulling, cutting off, and then going back to location. So you can kind of get an idea if it's right or not just by uh, just jogging this little red arrow down. Okay, well, without further ado, let's go ahead and start programming on our sub spindle. So there's a couple things that you need to know. Um, and we'll go over those in more detail here. So if we zoom in, you can see there's still some stock on here. So we don't have any stock on the OD because we already turned that. Uh, but we do need to put a radius in here. We have some on the face we need to get rid of. Likewise, we also have a little bit inside of this taper. I'm not actually going to go over that part. Uh, basically, because if, if, you, if we go through the steps of facing it, and doing that, you should be able to go through the steps of boring it and the rest of this. So once you get these uh, certain parameters set, it's pretty easy. It's pretty smooth sailing. Um, and then once we're done here, we'll actually go over the code and take a look at the code and what it means and, and why it makes sense, even though it might not make sense to you when you first look at it. All right, so let's go to top here. Uh, first things first, you can see I already created a subspindle toolpath group. Um, recommend doing that just to keep your things separate so you know what's what. Uh, let's go ahead and start off with facing this. So I'm going to go to my turning. I'm going to pick my face. Okay, so first things first, it is super important that you pick the proper tools for cutting on the right spindle, right? So obviously I'm going to need a left-handed tool for this. So I'm going to select a left-handed tool. If you don't have one, uh, or maybe it's a boring bar and you don't have a left-handed boring bar, you can actually go in and edit the tool and you can go to setup tool and you can do a bunch of different stuff. You can make it good for a bottom turret. You can change the default active spindle. You can make it a horizontal tool. You can reverse it so it's the other direction. You can do all kinds of stuff in here to, to basically get your tool the way that you want. Um, I do recommend trying to find an existing left-handed boring bar. Um, because this can get confusing if you start changing things. You always want to change one thing at a time and see if it gives you the result and then go from there. If it doesn't work, go back and change one, one other thing or change it back and change something different. Uh, because if you start changing a bunch of stuff at once, you really kind of get lost easy. So that's how you uh, essentially create the right orientation for your tool if you need to do that. So let's go ahead and get out of there. So we got our tool selected. All right, so the first step for the first operation you do, which is probably gonna be a backside face, you're going to need to create, and you can see I already have one here uh, because this is an old file that I had already done, so I'm kind of repurposing it for this video, but I will create this from scratch. So you're gonna to need to create a subspindle work plane. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit right click in here and I'm gonna hit new tool plane, sorry, tool plane, not work plane, um, and we'll call it sub two and what I'll do is I'll grab sub two whoops and I'm gonna tell it where the Z is so I'm gonna select remember this is on the sub spindle part so this is the part that translated during my pickoff cutoff I'm gonna select the face of that and you can see there the origin is 24.65 
So that's basically just in Mastercam how far apart the two spindles are. Now, it's important to note that that number means nothing when you go out to the machine. So everything's going to be based off of your G54 in the left and your G55 in the right spindle, at least in this case, or whatever work offsets you choose to use. So my main spindle, the front of my part is G54, my sub spindle, front of my part is G55. So noting that, I'm going to grab this again and I'm going to hit manual and I'm going to override this to a positive one. So if you haven't watched any of these videos before, uh, basically the way the work off system, set system works in Mastercam is that a zero is 54, one is 55, two is 56, three is 57. So they're that's how you set your work offset. So we're going to override that and make sure that this one is G55 when it outputs the code. Now, the face of that will be G55Z0 because we set it, the origin, right there it says origin Z to wherever that's at in Mastercam. So when that face will actually be G55Z0. The other thing we need to do is we need to make sure we are on the right spindle here. So we're going to pick right. I'm going to repick this and I'm going to hit check. And I'm going to go ahead and set my face parameters. So I'm not going to worry about speeds and speeds. Uh, 20 inches per revolution would probably be a little fast. But um, we're not going to sweat that. Uh, oh, one other thing, the tool numbers. So a lot of times you'll have uh, gang blocks where you'll be able to hold something in the left and the right side of the left and the right side of the block. Um, so obviously the, the le my left side would be working on your main spindle, right side would be working on the sub spindle. So what that means is you'll be calling up the same tool number, but you do need to change the offset number. I recommend offsetting it by at least an amount bigger than you have tools. So if you have a 20 tool station, then I would recommend making this one offset number 22, at least, at least. Um, what you don't want to do is you don't want to have overlapping tools. So like if you offset it by 10, and I said, okay, well, this is offset 12. Well, I could potentially have a tool in there that's offset 12 on the left side of my turret. So you want to be careful there. So I recommend always offsetting it by at least more tools than you have in your tur on your turret, more tool positions than you have on your turret. So I'm going to make this in 22. Um, still station number two because it's your turret station. Again, I'm not going to worry about the speeds here. So we're just going to move on. I'm going to hit face parameters. Uh, we're going to select our face location. So you can see there it's at zero because that's my G54. That's, that's the tool plane I selected. So it's going to make that at zero because that's where I told it the zero was. Um, cutter compensation. If you think about this, if we're coming down and facing this, we're going to be from the perspective of the tool, we need to be off to the right. Um, if, as you're looking at it, from here, it's off to the left, but remember, you're basically driving around that. Like, imagine you're sitting, you're in a, in the car, and you're going around that curve. You're going to be off to the right of that. So we're going to say off to the right. Um, we do have a corner radius here, so let's go ahead and put that corner radius in there. So I'm gonna that way I can avoid having to turn this any other way. So you just do it during the face. Uh, and I happen to know that's a 50 thousandths radius. Uh, my rough pass here is fine. My finish pass here is fine. So there's a diff bunch of different ways you can kind of do this. If you have really big radii, some of these are a little bit better, these strategies, than others. But um, this one will work just fine for us because it's only a 50 thou. So you go ahead and hit check. Hit check. Okay. And you can see there it made my tool path. Now the one thing that you may notice immediately is that the tool path is cutting in. Shoot, I got my radius wrong, right? Well, no, I didn't. Um, what's actually going on there, and by the way, just note that I'm using computer compensation. If I use where, you can see it basically got rid of my material still. Nothing really changed there. Uh, generally, I use control for the lathe, and you can see now it looks a little bit different. Uh, and that's just because it's not applying the tool nose radius 
because it doesn't know what it is. It, it's going to be going in the controller itself on the machine. Um, so, uh, just kind of moving along there, you, uh, if you set this to computer, I want to note that it actually is working correctly. So if we go into our back plot here and I hit play, My tool is moving so slow, I can't see it. Okay, there we go. Let me turn it up a little bit. So you can see there that it actually worked pretty good. So let me hit play again. Stop, play. So you can see it's actually covering the right thing. This, this here line is actually created where the theoretical point of the tool would be. So that's what you're seeing there. So anyway, that's how you create your toolpath in Mastercam for your subspindle. You have to make sure you do that. And then what you're going to do is when you get out to the machine, you're going to touch all of your tools on the right side of your turret off of a one, two, three block somewhere off of the spindle. Um, and you're also gonna set your subspindle, which is gonna be your B axis. So before I get into all that, let me, uh, let me go ahead and show you how to eject the part. So let's say this part's finished now. We're gonna skip the uh, taper in here and we're gonna come over to our Stock advance, stock transfer. Oh, we're going to pick chuck. So we're going to pick our chuck. We're going to pick our right chuck. We're going to reposition this. So original position is fine. And we're basically just going to say 0. 0.4. Actually, we're just going to say 0. 0.5. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go to custom parameters. You can see we already have G55 selected here. So that's fine. Now, one thing I want to note is that there's two ways you can do this. So I could say Z0, and I want it to go to G56. So I could come up and set my G56 basically right in front of my parts catcher, and I could set that my B0 for G56 right there, and then I could tell this okay, I want to go to G56, and I want to go to zero. And it would come up, and that would be set. The other way you can do it is I just basically make this number about 5 thousandths difference, and I still keep it 55. Then when I get out to the machine, I just jog the B-axis up, see where it's at, and I just type that number in for my, in my code where I need it to be, uh, which you'll see here in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and hit check. All right, so now my stock has advanced, or my, sorry, my subspindle has advanced up next to the parts catcher. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to inject this. So I'm going to go ahead and hit chuck again. And if you notice, I'm kind of adding these operations one by one, very similar to the pick off cutoff, only I'm just doing each single one individually. Um, here I'm going to hit unclamp, and I'm going to hit eject part, or eject stock in this case. Uh, once again, this is still going to stay at one unless you use your two or what you know whatever you're working with, you're going to keep that the same. So I'm going to go ahead and hit check, check, and then I'm going to bring it back. So I'm going to go ahead and hit chuck again, and I'm going to say reposition, and I'm just going to copy and paste that number. Which, by the way, you can. It doesn't really matter what these numbers are that much. You could change these at the machine. In fact, you're probably going to. Um, make sure that's G55 and hit check. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Let's post this code and see what happens. So let's go ahead and hit post, check, no. Uh, yeah, no, let's put this somewhere else. I don't want to oversave that. Save.
Okay, so here's our code. All right, so looking at this, okay, so our first operation, G14. What G14 is telling us is that it's working on the subspindle. So this is the most important code in the whole thing. You probably see, uh, you'll, you'll probably see G15s. Uh, this basically is a code that mirrors everything to the subspindle. So when G14 is active, it's, it's writing code as if, all this code is going to be written as if it's done on the main spindle. The G14 just mirrors it to the subspindle. That's simple. So writing code by hand is super easy for this machine. Um, and, and we have our post written so it writes code the same way uh, as you would write it by hand. So it's called G14. And it's calling G55 as needed. Um, okay, we got our constant service speed, which obviously I didn't worry about because we're only going 31, or sorry, not constant, but our, our spindle speed um, as just constant RPM. As you can see, we are spinning in an M4. So what that means is the, spin, the spindle is not spinning clockwise. It's actually spinning, um, it's actually spinning, sorry, it's, it's spinning counterclockwise here. So you gotta make sure that you have your tool oriented correctly. So either tool's gonna be upside down or right side up, depending on what you're doing here. Um, so in this case, we wanna make sure that our tool is up. The insert is up, because it's gonna be spinning counterclockwise. So if that's not right, you have to go back into that tool setup and you have to change the spindle direction for the tool. Um, Moving along here, so Z negative 0.0813, so it's basically starting 80 thousandths back, coming down to one inch, uh, turning on our constant surface speed, uh, constant surface speed is eight, um, max speed is 10,000. G99, okay, so right here we're feeding into X.8, which is the OD of our part, and then we're going G2, and we're swinging that radius to zero. And G1 coming back out, or back down to uh, 0.275, which is inside that taper, coming out in the Z. And remember, all this is happening like it would be happening on the main spoke if you're thinking about these numbers, right? It's all kind of happening like as if it was happening on the main spoke because you got a Z negative and you're working your way positive. Um, that wouldn't be right if we were programming the subspindle. But in this case, it is, because that G14 is going to mirror everything for us. Uh, turning the spindle off, turning the colon off, heading home, M1. Okay, now we got a G55B0. All right, so right there, that is our command to move, okay? So that's the one I'm going to change when I get out to the machine. I'm going to alter that number. I'm going to jog my subspindle up and see what that difference is. I'm just gonna put, you know, I'll change that out the machine like the G14 inches or G8 inches or whatever it needs to be to be right in front or wherever it needs to be to basically eject that part into the, the parts catcher. Um, next up, it's just, these are just extra cancel commands, just try to be safe. Um, and then we're ejecting the part. So M, uh, M36. This is actually the parts catcher opening the little chute, and there is a dwell, so to make sure that has time to get to final position, opens the chuck. If you have a parts ejector in the back, so a spring-loaded parts ejector, or basically an air blast, it'll shoot that part out, get caught in the catcher, fall down, M37, that's going to put the catcher back up, and then G55, G0, and then this would be B0 again, and your spindle would go back to where it's supposed to be, back to zero. So uh, that's, that's how the code works. The most important thing is that G14. Again, that's just, just mirroring everything over. So makes programming super simple. Well, I hope that covers everything. Uh, Good luck with your parts. Uh, good luck with programming subspindle.